Oops, forgot about this guy. Well, if you guys have been keeping up with our recent videos, you know we just spent two and a half months in Italy. On the one hand, it's sad to go, but on the other hand, it's kind of nice to be back in your own home. You miss your bed, you miss your own kitchen. I definitely don't miss this couch though. No, me neither, because it's a very uncomfortable couch. It's horrible. It looks nice, but it's like a cheap Amazon knockoff and it's really uncomfortable. We had just a ton of incredible food in Italy, and the only thing that makes us sad is the fact that we couldn't really like share it with you guys. Albert. Are you sure? Are you saying that we should do something to fix this injustice? I know how to cook one or two things. Maybe I can try. I don't know. It's been two and a half months. Do you even remember how to cook? Arper! Did you guys really think we were going to leave you out of the fun? Okay, here's the plan. I'm going to challenge Ava to try and recreate three of my favorite recipes from our trip. Do you think you can make them as good as the original? Arper, I try to do my best. Then they will be as good as in Italy. I don't know. We will try. They better be because I miss them and I want to eat them all the time. The first dish I would like you to make was that amazing pasta dish we had in Naples. I can't remember what it was called. Spaghetti allo scamaro, Harper. <laughs> That's the one. It had like olives and raisins, capers in it. So it had this really awesome sort of like tangy sweet thing going on. I really hope you can pull this one off because that's an awesome pasta dish. Pretty good to be back. Also because finally I can cook after two months and a half that I, I spent just hands off, finally I can cook again. Pasta allo scamora. Scammaro, Arte. Scammaro. Pasta allo scammaro is not so difficult the name. Do we want to remember what scammaro means? So it means kind of like lean times, lean eatings. It's what you would cook when you didn't have better ingredients, although these are pretty good ingredients. Or uh, this was the pasta dish that people cooked during lunch, like uh, mm. before uh, Easter Harper, because they couldn't eat like meat or something like that, so they eat uh, a very light and delicious plate of pasta. Yeah, well in Naples it was uh, actually a very rich tasting dish despite being a poor dish, so let's see if yours is the same. Please. Arper. Now I'm going to be a very harsh judge here, Ava. Try and tell me what you think. Buon appetito! Bon I don't understand. I feel like I'm back in Naples. It's pretty good. That's really good. I, it's, uh, I don't forget That's how That's really to good. I, I mean, I, I was like pretty sure that a plate of pasta that you cooked was going to be good, but I was expecting it to be like, oh, there's some like differences. It's like, it tastes exactly like that plate of pasta we had. Okay, well, you've won this challenge a little too easily. Are you up for something harder? I'll take that as a yes. The second dish I want Ava to make was this incredible beef stew that we had in Florence. 
Once again, I forget the name. Peposa dell'impruneta, Arber. Peposa. Peposa. Peposo. Peposo. That's what I said. In a way, it was a very simple kind of wine-based beef stew, but it was super, super peppery. The name is Peposo. Pepper. Makes sense. The first step is to marinate our beef meat, which means that we are going to marinate the meat with a bunch of fresh herbs. I'm using sage, rosemary and thyme, then some clove of garlic, black pepper and wine. But which wine I'm going to use? Because this is a traditional dish from Florence, from Tuscany, I'm going to use the Chianti wine. That is also the wine that they used in the past when they created this dish. Let the meat marinate for about one hour, one hour and a half. it cook for about three hours, three hours and a half, until the wine and the tomatoes become just that uh, amazing, delicious, creamy. It smells so good in here already. Off to a good start with this dish. Well, it certainly smells like the real thing. It smells amazing. <laughs> but before you try this, this dish has a very good story. So maybe we can share it with our friends. And with me, because I don't know the story. It seems that it was invented for the people who worked to build the dome of Florence, the cathedral of Florence, mm. Cupola di Brunelleschi. There is a small area close to Florence that the name is Impruneta, the name of this dish is Peposo dell'Impruneta, where they made all the terracotta, all the things to build the Brunelleschi cupola, and they cooked the meat in that terracotta for the people who build the Cupola di Brunelleschi. Lots of people have asked us where Ava gets her terracotta pots. The answer is unfortunate for those who are trying to also get the same pots. We drive to Mexico. Can I really eat these pepper kernels? Mm. Let's see if I did a good job. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Super peppery. Super good. That's amazing. Yeah, that's like, um, I want to be careful with my words here. We went to an excellent place in Florence. They make an amazing pepo, so this is better? Can I say that? Can I say that without making Florence angry? For sure she can't cook a Fiorentina like you guys no, can. No, no, no. no, no, no. This, this is extraordinary. It's peppery, but it's not too peppery. Because it cooks for so long, that pepper flavor really just like I don't I don't have the culinary words to describe it. Here in America. You can reproduce the Italian dish, maybe make them better. See, you say that, but everything I've challenged you with uses ingredients that, let's be honest, are pretty easy to get here. You ready for something a little bit harder? They are better. <laughs> okay, Emma, my final challenge and most difficult challenge is a dessert from our cannoli video. But it's not a cannolo. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, Alper, I know what you are talking about.
This is ricotta with some uh, powdered sugar and actually it's the same feeling that we use to make a cannoli. Okay, here we have another thing I've forgotten the name. Sfinchone? No, but Sfinchone looks like it's like a pizza. Spincha di San Giuseppe. Spincha, Spincha. I was so close. Spincha di San Giuseppe. I was so close. So, like the name says, this is a traditional pastry, a traditional dessert that in Sicily they do for San Giuseppe. And it's also for the festa del papà. Oh, yeah, your Father's Day is, is the. Giorno di San Giuseppe. San Giuseppe, something has to do with him. I don't know. Was he a dad? It's like, no, saying if Giuseppe is, San Giuseppe is a dead or not. Oh, right, that's sort of <laughs> blasphemy. My bad. Oh, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> Sorry, San Giuseppe. I didn't mean to imply. But, but, San Giuseppe. <laughs> yeah. He made these. No, he didn't make these. He didn't make these. <laughs> The na na nuns, nuns, nuns of a convent made this in honor of San Giuseppe. Oh, okay. <laughs> you lose points a little bit because the one we had in Sicily was huge. It was one big one. See, Arper, but I didn't have a big pot to do them a huge. No, but you can't fry in that big pot. Why not? No, how do you fry in the, in the pot for pasta? You put oil in and you heat hey, it see, up. see, how many, how much oil do you need to put? Still. Oh, yeah. Looks like the real deal. Salper, buon appetito. Buon appetito. I have all the ricotta on my nose. Hey, basta. I'm going to start by saying this is very good. It's good. Basta. There is a but. This one is not the same. And that's for a very important reason. We don't have the ricotta. No, we do not. I learned a ton about ricotta on this trip from our trip to Sicily, where I first learned about goat ricotta. Amazing. We made ricotta with the cheesemaker in Ava's hometown. We saw how buffalo ricotta is made. I learned that what we have here, that what we call ricotta, isn't even just bad ricotta, it literally is by definition, not ricotta, in the slightest. It's not even the same thing. It's as close as you can get, but I don't understand why we don't have ricotta here. So maybe one day we can try to make our own. Leave a comment down below if you would like to see us try to make real ricotta. Real ricotta. That recipe you found online that uses lemon juice, that's not real ricotta. And I really wish I had a way to have goat ricotta all the time. Hang on a minute. Do you guys think I could raise goats here? It's very hot here. Will that kill a goat? Are there any goat experts out here? Will the Arizona sun kill a goat? Is there a safe way to raise a goat here that it will not die? I'm desperate. Okay, it was waiting. So yeah, without real ricotta, and especially without either sheep or goat ricotta, this falls pretty short of the mark. But it's still really good. So check out the recipe down below. It's still really yummy. You'll only really miss it if you've had like the real, real, real thing. But if you know what the real ricotta is, this is uh, pretty amazing. Before we go, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian, pa excuse me, pasta grammarians 
in action. Ralph and Laura, uh, they came with us on the Pasta Grammar tour this year. They're amazing people. We love them to death. Together on the tour, we made uh, macaruna pasta. If you saw our last video, you'll be familiar with that pasta. And we all made um, macaruna with beans, macaruna with suriaki, as they- Suriaka. Suriaka. God, I can't get this stuff right. And they went home and made it themselves. Bravi, bravi, bravi. Speaking of which, we have new dates for the Pasta Grammar Tour, also our week in Dessa. So if you're interested in joining us in Italy next year, go to pastagrammar.com slash tour. We'd love to see you there. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao.